So today I want to talk about reimagining health care. We don't actually have health care. We have sickness care. We get sick, we go to the hospital, they try and figure out what's wrong with us and fix us. But I'd like to posit, why don't we reimagine health care? So this is the cost of uh, sequencing the human genome. The first human genome was $2.7 billion. The second was $400 million. In 2014, it broke 1,000. In 2021, it'll be 100. So imagine this. Imagine I go to a doctor, they sequence my genome, and then tell me what I might get in terms of a disease during my life. And not just my genome, my biome, in other words, my gut, and say, these are the medicines you might adversely react to. So if you do get sick, we know what your treatment plan should be. That's real health care. That's preventative. So how do we get to that? Part of this is being enabled by exponentially improving price performance. Uh, we all know Moore's Law. In 1970, a CPU uh, from Intel had 2,000 transistors on it, and today it's 23 billion transistors. And what that practically means is a gigaflop is a measure of compute speed. It's a billion transactions in a single second. And in 1961, a gigaflop cost $153 billion. And in 2018, it was two cents. And that's so 2018. <laughs> it's going down from there. And what that means is things are getting faster, cheaper, lighter, better. And it's not just about Moore's Law. There are 20 different exponentially price-performing uh, technologies. We're going to talk about two other ones. One is drones. 100,000 for a drone, down to 700, now 200. And we'll talk about 3D printing. But what does that mean in a traffic jam in a city in gridlock we're now moving organs for human transplant by drone in a city rather than an ambulance. Not only is it cheaper, it's faster. I am very lucky. My parents spent thousands of dollars on this smile. <laughs> I came from a very privileged background. But this young man wasn't so fortunate. So he's in digital design. So what he did is he 3D modeled his teeth. He did a lot of research, and he devised his own Invisalign, divided it over 12 periods. So over 18 months, he will move his teeth back. He is 3D printing all his Invisaligns for 60 bucks. Might that change orthodontistry? Yes, no. <laughs> Do we have our voting cards here today? Okay. This is IBM's uh, hard disk in 1956. <laughs> you can see they're trying to move it. And I was in Barcelona, Spain, where they launched this micro SD card. It's a terabyte. So it's 2 million times lighter, 200,000 times the capacity, at 1 13,000th the price. And what it practically means, because it fits into this, is I can have every medical record, every CT scan, MRI, X-ray, every test I've ever had, every condition I've ever had, every hospital medical report. So rather than being in New York for my shoulder and you know my heart in, uh, where was it, Miami, or is it my heart in San Francisco? I don't know how the song goes, but you know, I could carry this around with me at all time. Well, how do I make it secure? Face technology, you know, I unlock my phone with my face and my voice and my thumb, three authentication points. We have a friend, his name's Joe. And Joe used to faint, and everyone, oh, Joe, you know, it's just Joe, he faints, you know, he, he gets very emotional, that's just Joe. Well, one time Joe was in the hospital and he fainted, and they slapped an ECG on him, and it turned out his heart had stopped. All these years his heart had been stopping, but had just been spontaneously restarting itself, thank God. So, needless to say, Joe now has a pacemaker, but if we had had this, this is an ECG on your Apple Watch Series 4. 
In other words, we're moving to an era of continuous monitoring of medical health. I was at an, um, a conference the other day, I was using this example, and a guy came up to me and showed me, every two weeks I put this thing in my arm, he's a diabetic, and it gives me real-time monitoring on my smartphone in real-time what my glucose level is, 24 hours a day. Wow, so he can see, the reason I wake up kind of feeling weird at night is I dip below the, I go into the red zone in the middle of the night. This is an ophthalmology unit, $10,000, and MIT Labs, where Nicholas Negroponte co-founded it, this is a $2 accessory that goes on your smartphone to save millions of people's uh, eyesight in developing nations. Is this going to change the way things work? This is a smartphone ultrasound for developing world. So the American Medical Association says that 70% of doctor visits and 40% of emergency department visits can be eliminated simply by a telephone. Is that going to change our medical system? Now, I want to uh, give you this. We've been talking about AI. This is an AI called Babylon Health. You get to log on anytime and within a minute talk to a doctor. And the doctor uh, is interacting like Skype or Zoom, but has access to your medical records. And the AI is doing two things. One, it's looking at your face. You look confused. So the, doc, the AI is feeding to the doctor, this, the patient looks confused, so they spend more time on it. The patient looks worried. Oh, you seem to be worried. Yeah, it sounds like a serious condition. The other thing the AI is doing is going through the thousands of decision trees that Alexander talked about. So I feel sick at my stomach. Is it the top of your stomach or the bottom? If I say the top, that eliminates a whole bunch of things and introduces a whole bunch of others so that I can actually accurately diagnose it remotely over Skype or Zoom, in essence, Skype or Zoom. It's called Babylon Health. Last year, I talked about autonomous vehicles, and Gene, thanks, it's a lovely photo. Um, uh, on the cover of this magazine, do I, A, look sinister, uh, B, very sinister, or C, demonic. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Gene, C. Okay, it's uh, been an absolute delight to be here. You don't mind being surveyed. Well, if you have uh, Waze or Google Maps, you are already being surveyed. I understand that. But somebody who has a heart condition, like our friend Joe, wants to be surveyed because he doesn't want to die. And the AIs can actually now say, we have seen some abnormalities in your heart rhythm, mm. and we anticipate from our AI, you will have a heart attack in five days. Would that not be better to know than, oh my God, my arm is <laughs> going numb, Let, get me to the hospital. So the... So this new world, we will choose to opt in. And Joe has, you know, if I were Joe, I'd choose to opt in. Mm. Because I want to be here for the longevity session for next year's discussion. 